Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Wheeler. I'm a uh, faculty member in landscape architecture and the host of our LDA 190 uh, lecture series this, this fall, as most of you know. Um, we have been looking at uh, the subject of a sustainable campus and hearing from a number of people in various agencies dealing with that topic. Um, today we think about return to transportation, which is a very important topic in terms of sustainability, <laughs> not just on campus, but in Davis overall. Something like 57% of Davis's greenhouse gas emissions come from transportation. Uh, that's in part because the city doesn't have any big industry and stuff like that, but it is a big challenge for us all and uh, relates to what our speakers today will be talking about. Uh, we have three speakers. I'm going to let them... Um, uh, I'm going to introduce Clifford and then uh, let him introduce the other two. Uh, Clifford Contreras is the uh, Director of Transportation and Parking Services at this university. He was an undergraduate here. Uh, as, and David, um, who's another of our speakers today, was did graduate work here. So we have two UCD um, uh, alums of the sort. Um, and, uh, and for those of you who don't know, Transportation and Parking Services is a very important building on, um, out by the ARC, where you can, um, which handles many different dimensions of getting around the campus. I will let them take it away and tell you about those. So thank you for being with us. Thank you very well. Can I uh, shut the door? You want to leave it open? You can shut the door. And I will hand around also the sign up as usual. Those of you in the class, please check off your name. Again, my name is Cliff Contreras. I'm the director of TAPS. And, and with me today, because uh, it would be a burden to have you just listen to me for 50 minutes, and these guys are a lot more interesting than I am, and certainly know their subject matter more so than I do. Uh, I brought with me today uh, Mary Mathley, who is our transportation demand and marketing coordinator. Mary, can you stand so people can see you? She'll be talking uh, later about our alternative transportation and our new GOAT club. And also with me is David Tocqueville Works. He is the TAPS Bicycle Coordinator, internationally known uh, everywhere in every circle related to bicycles. Uh, in all seriousness, he is an expert on bicycle transportation, and we're very fortunate to have him on this campus. Uh, before I get started throughout uh, the course of this, this time frame that we're going to present, just to keep you awake, uh, we're going to ask a couple of questions, and we have some free giveaways from our uh, very generous partner, uh, Sodexo. And uh, five of the first giveaways are for lunch, uh, up to $7 at uh, a number of places in the silo. And our grand prize is a lunch for two at the, uh, the silo cafe, the Benrock Cafe. So uh, throughout this, and there's one question on here related to Unitrans. So we have Anthony Paul Mayer in the audience. So Anthony, you uh, have to recuse yourself from answering that question. And Stephen, I saw you take a sneak peek at this this uh, Q &A, so we can't answer any of them. So that said, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to do a, an overview of, of TAPS. Uh, we're going to talk very briefly about our mission, vision, and values. Uh, we're going to do uh, talk about some of the unit programs. The sustainable programs. Uh, Mary's going to talk about the Go Club. David's going to talk about the bicycle program. We hope to leave some time for some Q and A at the end. Here's our pretty vast organizational chart, and for today's discussion, we're going to focus on the bike program and the alternative transportation program. What's our mission? Well, our mission is to facilitate the access needs of the campus. How many people here have a parking permit? Three. Excellent. We hope to get that down to zero. <laughs> What's our vision? Well, our vision is to invest uh, in affordable and sustainable transportation. Uh, you'll start seeing uh, more of that in terms of the investments that we make, and Mary's going to share with you some numbers as it relates to uh, the Startup of the Go Club, which just launched at the start of this uh, academic year. So I think you're going to be impressed with some of the numbers that we've been able uh, to uh, sustain thus far. What are our values? Well, we want to make sure that uh, we're honest uh, with our customer base. On the accountability side, we want to be transparent in, in everything that we do. 
On the perspective side, we want to be fair and consistent with the things that we are, are offering uh, the campus. And on the service side, we're dedicated to outstanding customer service. And when we don't do that, we want to hear from you to let us know how we can improve that level of service. Under the programs and descriptions, if you go back to the org chart, uh, most of the operations are related to parking. Uh, we also have a small airport just west of 113. I'm not going to focus on that. What we are going to focus on today is the Go Club and the bicycle program. Hi, come on in. Hi, you don't have to run. Nobody's, nobody's paying attention to you. Uh, on the sustainable transportation, uh, we want to talk about West Village, a very key development as it relates to alternative transportation on the campus. I want to talk about uh, a parking uh, lighting project that we currently have underway that we hope to have finished by the end of the winter quarter. Uh, David's going to talk more about uh, the bike bar and our partnership with them. Uh, we have a bike garage now in, in, uh, as a satellite office, satellite location from the bike bar, and we're going to talk a little bit about the cyclist assistance program. And Mary's going to go into detail about the alternative transportation program. <laughs> West Village. Um, you probably see if you've been anywhere west of 113, some of the construction that's going on related to the development of this housing area. It's on 220 acres. Uh, it's full build out. It will house uh, almost uh, 4,500 residents, including 500 faculty and staff. At its full build out, it will have dedicated transit service. And I understand, Anthony, that will be on 10 minute headways. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, and it's got, uh, with that development, 4.2 miles of bicycle and pedestrian paths. We had one of our graduate students calculate the CO2 emissions sink annually, just as it relates to West Village, and it's nearly half a million pounds in CO2 emissions. Sustainable programs. I talked a little bit about the lighting project. We've invested thus far over a million dollars in retrofitting all the lights within our parking facilities. It's a 6.2 year return on investment. We got a big partner in this, PG&E, that uh, contributed over $300,000 in grant funding. Uh, they're energy efficient lighting. I don't know if you've seen these lights, maybe in the parking structures, so that uh, they're on at 50% capacity and as you grow and get closer and closer to them, they'll grow in intensity in terms of the lighting. Uh, a much uh, improved uh, lighting, not just for energy efficiency, but for safety as well. This program was endorsed by the campus police department. Uh, there are over 2,000 parking facility lights, and so if anybody wants some used lights, we've got plenty of them. Uh, there's over $120,000 in energy savings annually. We pay our utility bill, and so this was a significant, come on in, significant investment on our end, but it's going to pay off, as I said, in over 6.2 years. The kilowatt saved are, are over 1.3 kilowatts saved, and here's the big one. Over a million pounds of CO2 reduction annually just by retrofitting our lights. So really a worthwhile investment on our end. Improved lighting, safer for the campus, just a great project. We hope to have that done uh, by, the, by the end of the winter quarter. Uh, one of our sustainable programs is, is our relationship with the bike barn. And David talked a little bit more about this. Uh, the bike bar located near the silo, on the east side of the silo, um, just isn't large enough to continue to allow people to do self-repairs in that facility. We've known that for a while, and we felt, given the facilities that we have throughout the campus, if we could identify an additional area on campus where people could do their own self-repairs, because the bike church is no longer located on the campus, that used to be in a housing area uh, near Orchard, that people would utilize this facility, and maybe more people would utilize a bike if they had the ability to repair the bikes themselves, as opposed to maybe you know spending the dollars necessary at a shop to do that. So we talked with Robert St. Cyr, the manager of the bike barn, and told him that we had a facility within the North Entry parking structure. And this is the office space located right here in the North Entry parking structure. That's the one off of Howard Way near Hickey Gym. And we've actually renovated this space. You can see the rubber mats on the floor here. You see the bike stands here. This is where people can now take their bikes and do self-repairs. We also have a caged area just outside of this space where people can do self-repairs as, as well. What we hope that this will do, not only so that people will be able to 
you know, inexpensively fix their own bikes. But one of the big problems that we have on campus related to bicycle use is abandoned bikes. We've got, I think David guesstimates that we have over a thousand abandoned bikes. We pick up a thousand a year. There's probably another thousand that we can't pick up because we just don't have the storage space to do that. And we sell those at auction uh, twice a year in a public auction. And David will talk more about that. Uh, so we hope to alleviate the, the abandoned bike problem on campus by people doing this. And then part of the other reason that we feel that people might be leaving their bikes, you know, at the end of the school year is, you know, I come out from class or from my dormitory and I look, there's my bike, it has a flat tire, I don't want to deal with it. So one of the things that we thought that we could run a program comparable to our motorist assistance program for people, for those three people that had parking permits, when you have a problem with your with your vehicle because you left the lights on, you need a battery jump, or you locked your keys in your car, and we come out and uh, do a vehicle entry, or you run out of gas and we take you to the gas station, or your tire's flat and we put air in your tire, the cyclist assistance program is a, is, a, is a comparable program for cyclists that ride their bicycles so that you can contact the bike barn and they will come to you and they'll fix your bike either on the spot or if they can't fix it on the spot, they'll take it back to the bike barn or the bike garage, fix it, call you when, when it's repaired and they come and pick that up. Now the difference is this is a fee for service. The motorist assistance program is a complimentary program because you as part of your permit price, it pays for it, it pays for the, the motion assistance program. Thus far in talking with Robert, uh, this is doing extremely well, the bike garage. And there isn't yet enough word of mouth going around, so Mary's going to help Robert do the marketing necessary to get the campus aware of this new program. We think when they find out about this, this is going to grow pretty significantly. How many people know what Zipcar is? Okay. How many people are Zipcar members? Really? Okay, maybe after this you will be. Uh, Zipcar, we launched Zipcar on the campus uh, at the start of the fall quarter. Uh, when Zipcar came here, uh, by the way, Zipcar is a car sharing uh, company. They're located, they're based in, in Boston, uh, back in uh, uh, Anthony's old roots. Anthony is a Harvard graduate. Uh, and um, when they came to us, one of the big concerns that we had was their inability to rent cars to students that were 18 years old. The bulk of the campus population, there's over 30,000 students here that aren't 21 years old. The bulk of them aren't. And so they wanted to bring a program that most of the campus population couldn't otherwise utilize. We said, well, that's just not going to work on our campus. You need to change your, uh, your regulations to allow 18-year-olds to utilize this service. Well, they eventually did, and we now have a system-wide contract. That means all 10 campuses and their medical centers have a contract with Zipcar that allows folks on their campus, and they have to be campus affiliates, staff, faculty, or students, can utilize Zipcar. The cost is $8 per hour during the week and I believe it's $62 uh, for the entire day. So if you use it eight hours, it kicks into the lower program, the daily program. Uh, there are currently 156 members of Zipcar. When we talked to the Zipcar folks when they first came out here, they've only been here for a month now. When they said, when we reached the two week mark, we hope to have 36 people signed up for Zipcar. We're obviously ahead of that curve right now with 156 members. With those 156 members, we have a 13% utilization, which is significant given that it's only been on the campus you know, now for just over a month. There are eight cars on campus. Four of them are located in Lot 25A next to the ARC. Two are located in Lot 43 adjacent to the silo right across the street from the bus terminal and two are located on the south side of the rack hall. Uh, the bulk of the cars are Priuses and uh, Scions, Honda Scions, I believe, uh, is the manufacturer. When we reach a point where we have 40% utilization of the eight cars that we already have, they'll bring on more, more cars at no cost. There is no cost associated with this program 
to TAPS or to the campus. Yes? Could you define your utilization? Utilization would mean that uh, if you take the entire 24-7 hour period, if you're utilizing those at 40%, they'll bring on a new car. So that means 40% of the total hours? Correct. Yes. So quite a deal. So all, all that we're investing in this is the parking space at which they utilize to park these vehicles. Not a bad investment because at 40% utilization, Zipcar saves the campus from having to build 14 new parking spaces. So just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. It's also a terrific thing because in the past, when parents would call me telling me why their son or daughter couldn't bring their car to campus, my response is it's a campus policy. They already live on campus. They're here. But what about if they need to go to work? What about if they need to go to an internship? What about if they need to go wherever? We well, really didn't have an answer for that. Now we do. You can utilize Zipcar to get to where you need to go. I think it's a good time for me to ask one of our questions. Okay, so just bark out an answer, and the first one closest to it gets a free lunch to the silo. Okay. Everybody ready? Now this question doesn't have a lot to do with sustainability, but the reason it's important is because at some point, hopefully next year, the next time I ask this question, the, the answer is going to be at least the same, but not significantly more. And that's how it deals with sustainability. How many parking spaces on the campus? Well, park something out if you want a free lunch. 40. I'm sorry. 40,000? 50,000. No, lower. 4,000. Higher. 5,000. 6,000. Higher than 10. 15. Higher than 15. 22. Come on, guys. 31. 32. Did somebody say 16? Yeah. Who said it? Raise your hand. Did I? <laughs> well, your professor said you did. The actual answer is 16,311. 15 was pretty close. Yeah. Stand up so people can notice and recognize. Stand up. You're not getting it. Congratulations. <laughs> Zimrite, how many people know what Zimrite is? Oh, geez, not as many. Okay, Zimrite is, uh, is a software program associated with uh, helping people find a partner to, to ride with. So it's a it's sort of a car sharing software program. It utilizes Facebook as its platform. How many people are familiar with Facebook? <laughs> Everybody, right? Almost every student has a Facebook account. I think I'm the only dinosaur in here that doesn't have a Facebook account. I think Mary's always right. Do you not have a Facebook account? No, I don't. My son has a Facebook account, but I don't. Um, thus far, we've got uh, <coughs> 500 people that have signed up as users of the Zimrod. And so uh, that's, going, that's going really, really well in terms of numbers. And I would hope to increase that number. I, I'm predicting by the, the end of the winter quarter that number should be in the four-digit four digit range. I'm going to hand this off to Mary so she can talk more about uh, the Go Club. And before I do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one more giveaway. How much does your taps? invest annually in alternative transportation? Five million. No. Lower than five, higher than eight hundred. One million. <laughs> Who said a million? You're the winner. What's your name? Steven. Steven, what's your last name? <laughs> Stand up. We actually invest a little over 1.1 1 .1 million. Congratulations. <laughs> So that's it. The grand prize is actually lunch for two at the Silent Ben Rock Cafe, so we'll do that towards the end. And so we have four more questions to go. Mary, thank you. Well, hello, my name is Mary Mackley, and I'm the um, Go Club coordinator, previously known as the Alternative Transportation Program, and I also market the program. How many of you guys have heard of the Go Club so far? 
Phew, that's good to hear, because I was hoping, I, I, I'm sure we just launched it in September at the start of fall quarter, so I'm really trying to get the word out, so it's a great opportunity to be here and teach you guys about the Go Club, especially since it looks like many of you use an alternative mode to commute to campus. Um, so the Go Club is our new name and identity for the Campus Alternative Transportation Program. It was launched this September at the start of fall quarter, and currently we have a little, approximately 2,000 members. But this is definitely not a reflection of how many people use an alternative mode here on campus. It's, there's plenty of people using an alternative mode. We want more, but not too many people know about the Go Club yet. So we're trying to get people enrolled in that because you do get incentives and benefits for being in the Go Club. So why did we, why did we create the Go Club? Well, clearly it's about sustainability. Transportation accounts for 38% of the greenhouse gas emissions in California, and 78% of those emissions are from passenger vehicles. So TAP started conducting a campus travel survey in the 2007-2008 school year so we could take a look at how people are getting to campus. And from this you can tell bike is king, it's 40% of the mode share, and next is um, bus, which I think largely accounts to Unitrans. But there's still a quarter of the population that are driving alone to campus. We also look at average vehicle ridership, other known as ABR, otherwise known as ABR. ABR is the ratio of the campus population to the number of cars commuting to campus. So the higher the number, the better. And it's good for us to see from our campus travel surveys that in 07 08, our ABR was a little lower than it was the following year in 08 09. So we're at 3.5, and we want to keep that number going up. So, Cliff, you have yep, my yeah. other question. Another the question. <laughs> the, ne the next slide reveals the answer. Okay, next question. Click on the draw here. How many pounds of CO2 emissions were saved on campus last year as a result of people choosing an alternative mode to driving alone? One million? More. Two More. More. Two More. Six million. Ten million. More than ten. Please. More than 20. 30. More than 30. 40. Who said 40? Oh, what's your name? Trisha. Stand up, Trisha. You know the drill. There you go. Congratulations. Actually, 40.4 pounds. So pretty substantial with regards to what we're doing to reduce the carbon footprint on campus. What you guys are doing to reduce that carbon footprint. So applaud yourselves. Yeah, so 40 million pounds saved annually is a big number, and we're proud of that. But we definitely want to increase that number. And from the campus travel survey, we learned that less than 20% of the population, of the campus population, is aware of TAPS's alternative transportation program. So we looked at methods of increasing this awareness, and one of them was creating the Go Club. It's a more fun name. It's, and it's a more fun program, and we gave it a new look and a new identity. Um, the alternative transportation program didn't really have a look or identity, so hopefully this will help me market it a little easier. And I created some brochures and collateral posters. You'll see banners lining the outside of the TAPS building and posters in the ARC and the MU. Hopefully you'll see an ad on the um, football big screen and in, at the basketball game. So we're really, really trying to get the word out about this program and increase our numbers. We also added more incentives and features to the program. The original alternative transportation program didn't recognize people who biked and walked to campus. In other words, they didn't get any incentives for doing that. So we added bike and walk as formalized programs, and I'll go into more of the incentives for that later. We also partnered with Zip Runs and Ride, which Cliff mentioned, and I also wanted to add Zipcar um, at $8 an hour to rent those vehicles. It also includes gas and insurance, so that's huge for students. Um, we increased the subsidy for people who take the bus and train to campus, and I'll go into more of that later. And we also created some fun with the program. Now we have a prize basket. So I'll be doing 12 drawings a year. I just did two for people who carpool. And you get this wonderful prize basket that our Go Club sponsors contributed um, to. It has tons of great items in it. It's worth almost $400, and we were really excited. We met with other campus units to see if they wanted to be a partner to the Go Club, and they were just more than willing to do so. Sustainability is a hot issue, and so people were really excited and gave wonderful gifts. For example, Campus Rack gave 12 one-month memberships to the ARC, which includes group 
exercise classes. <coughs> and they didn't just commit for one year, they're gonna do this for the next five years. So we'll be having these prize baskets. And the basket is a bicycle basket itself. So it's all zero waste. The whole prize is um, a zero waste prize basket. The bookstore, I mean, the bike barn donated um, $50 off labor, 12 of those, which is a great thing to have if you ride your bike. They also gave us one men's and one ladies bicycle for grand prize drawings. So that was really cool. And Sodexo is a great partner. They gave um, more of those gun rock lunches and $7 coupons to the silo eateries. And we have, uh, all, as you can see, a lot of sponsors. Unitrans gave bus passes just in case you're not currently using Unitrans and you want to try it and it works for you. So there's a lot of really great um, prizes in the prize basket. So let's look at the programs. If you're lucky enough to live to campus, which I'm sure many of you are, and uh, walk to campus, now you'll get incentives for doing that. We decided to give out 12 um, complimentary permits per year for people who walk to campus, so that's one per month. For the days that maybe it's too cold or you're not feeling great or you have a medical appointment and you really need to take your car. So it sounds counterproductive to give out parking permits for a program like this, but it's really to keep you in the program and prevent you from buying a campus parking permit. Because that is the criteria to be in the GO Club, you can't have a parking permit. Um, another great incentive for being in the WALK program is Campus Recreation donated a complimentary membership to their formal walking program called Aggies on the Move. So, they have their own set of incentives, so you double up on the incentives. If you ride the bus, um, TAPS will subsidize your bus pass. So they will give you twenty-three to up to twenty-three dollars off every month of your bus ticket, and um, you also receive uh, all these other incentives, including an emergency ride home pro program, which is a lot of people worry. Well, what if I get sick or my child gets sick? Um, I can't take the bus home for some reason. Well, we'll give you a ride home. So that just alleviates that worry and makes it a little easier to try taking the bus. We contribute, or TAPS contributes nearly $100,000 annually um, towards Unitrans, and that, um, that helps subsidize undergrads ride Unitrans for free, so it's all as an incentive to, to utilize this wonderful transit system we have here in Davis. Unitrans ferries over 3 million passengers each year, so they're a huge partner in sustainability. We also sell discounted passes to Yellow Bus, Sacramento Regional Transit, and Fairfield to Student Transit, if you live in any of those areas. We also work with the medical center, so if you live in West Sacramento, you can use the, um, the shuttle that goes from the med center to campus, and we sell those passes, and if you don't hold a campus parking permit, you get all the incentives that go along with the Go Club also. There's a growing number of people utilizing the train to get to campus, and people love taking the train if they live far from campus. It's a great way to commute. It's relaxing. It's just people can't say enough about taking the train. However, once they get to the train station, they always ask me, well, how do I get to campus once I get to the train station? Unitrans does have a route that goes from the train station to campus. I know schedules sometimes aren't quite there, so we are working on that and looking at that. We've um, been in discussion with the bike share program, which would be a great solution to have, you know, bikes set up at the train station and you could just jump over to campus, but I usually recommend to people to go to the bike auctions and buy an inexpensive bike so that they can bring it on the train with them and just bike over to campus. Right now, carpoolers are our biggest number in the GO Club right now. It's a great way to commute. It really brings down your expenses rather than driving alone. You're sharing the cost um, of gas, of wear and tear on your vehicle. Uh, the parking permit is 75% off what you would pay for a normal parking permit, so this is a great um, alternative mode of transportation, and as Cliff mentioned, Zimride is the best way to find a carpool partner. It's also a great way to find a ride to Tahoe or a home for the weekend. So I really want to get the word out about Zimride, and you can go to the Go Club website, goclub.ucdavis.edu, and all the information um, for Zimride and Zipcard are, are on there. If you've got at least seven people that you can commute, then they go into a van pool. So we work with um, van lease providers. When people are interested in something like this, because they live more than 15 miles away, which makes van pooling a, a more economical option, then I forward your name and information to the van lease provider with your permission. And once they have enough people, they'll start putting little meetings together to get a van pool going. Again, there's all the, uh, the benefits that go along with van pool. And currently, we have three van pools coming to campus right now. So 
if you know anyone or if you live in any of these areas, they're always looking for additional passengers or, or they'll take a casual ride or if you need a ride. And last but not least is our Go Bike program. And again, that, this was not formalized and now it is. So if you're biking to campus, you'll get the 12 complimentary permits for those days that you're just unable to bike and you need to take your car to campus. So we made it a little easier to keep biking and prevent you from buying that campus par parking permit. And um, another great perk that for bicyclists, they have access to the ARC shower and locker facilities. In the past, it was only if you were biking from outside of Davis to campus, but now it's if you're biking within Davis or outside of Davis, and if you walk. So um, we can get you set up with a shower and locker at the ARC. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to David, our base bicycle coordinator. Unless Cliff has another. I've got another question. Go ahead, Dan, get set up. Now, if you're paying real close attention, Mary sort of gave the answer to this in her presentation, but I'm going to ask it again. Here's the question. How many people, and Anthony, you can't answer this, people did Unitrans ferry last year? Three million. Three million. Slightly more than that. Uh, Ooh. Three point five. Ooh. Very close, but it's lower than that. Three point four. Who said three point four? You did. Okay, stand up. What's your name? Sarah. Okay, here you go. It's actually three million four hundred twenty-two thousand seven hundred seventeen. People. I got that answer about an hour ago when I called Anthony for that information. So, Anthony, that number is, uh, you you'd indicated uh, on the phone that that number actually grew from last year, is that correct? Yeah, it's about 5% uh, above. Well, I think it was, yeah, between 5 to 10% increase from the year before. From the year before. It's not the highest that we Yeah, year that's, the, year trans alone uh, is a significant partnership with TAPS and its ability to bring <laughs> People to the campus that don't otherwise, you know, bring a vehicle, and uh, we are uh, very conscious of that, and uh, we are we we truly want to be uh, the partners that we need to be in order to support that operation. So they're they're tremendous, and uh, we're happy to be their partners in our ability to provide a more sustainable transportation mode for people coming to the campus. Yeah. Dave, talk about Bob Big Cliff. Um, the bike, the bike program on campus has got a whole lot of different elements to it, and I'm going to go through each of these uh, individually here in just a moment, and um, I don't think I'm going to say anything that's major, um, but before I go to the next slide, Cliff? Oh, gosh, another one. Yeah. <laughs> before the grand prize, how many bike parking spaces are there on campus? Ooh, tougher one, huh? 40,000. Not quite. 18,000. <laughs> 18's close, a little bit high. Less than 22. 21. 18. 18. 18. 21. Who said 20? She did. Okay. What's your name? Kate. Sorry? Kate. So your name, how much? There's actually 20,597. I have licenses at the end for the grand total. So think about it. the last question is how many bike licenses did TAP sell last year? <laughs> so we don't have a slide. We don't have it. All right, so um, a lot of bikes on this campus, as you all know. We estimate 15 to 20,000 bikes on campus, you know, especially in the fall and spring, the weather's nice. Um, just a ton of bikes, about 20, 000, just over 20,000 bike parking spaces. Plaza registration is a requirement on this campus, and some people think, what that, what's that all about? Well, when you're dealing with 20,000 bicycles every day, there's a lot of issues that are easily resolved when you know who the owner of your bike is. Picking up abandoned bikes, dealing with illegally parked bikes, people need their locks cut, and we'll talk about that in a second. So, um, plaza registration um, is a relatively modest amount to pay for, consider it like a parking permit for your bike, and it, it does afford some benefits, especially in recovery of stolen bicycles. Um, we also have a program to provide cyclists, you know, people who don't have a parking permit uh, or are not part of the GO Club um, with access to actually a parking permits for, for a small fee um, for those times when you need to drive to campus and being able to get to an A lot, which is oftentimes a more convenient lo location for you. Um, so I accept this money to search for offer. Um, Bicycle safety education, um, I give talks in the dorms, I give talks off campus, go out to schools, that sort of thing. Um, so that's, that's part of my responsibility. And another part of the education process is 
developing literature and that sort of thing that uh, could be of help. And the Davis Bike Map, which we have a bunch of them here to you help yourself to them um, before you leave, um, is it's really pretty much the best map of Davis I think that's out there. And it really it shows you where all the bike lanes are, where all the bike paths, where the bike shops, where the where you can get air in your tire. And on the back side of the map, there's a lot of resource information that could be pretty helpful. Um, Bike commuter shower and locker access. Um, of course, as a go, well, students, you know, you can pretty much just go use those showers any time. But for those of us who aren't students, um, the Go Bike Club gives you uh, opportunity to use these, and um, and we work closely with the folks at the Arc and Hickey Gym, the pavilion, to provide access. You know, which is great. Bike lock cutting service. Um, you know, it used to be that we uh, we cut a few locks a week, a couple of locks, well, locks a week maybe for people who've lost their keys. Nowadays, it's broken keys. Um, there's a different kind of key that, that most manufacturers are using on, on locks, and, and they tend to break inside the lock. So we, we do we do at least one a day on, on average, and often we do as many as four or five a day. So something to know about. Abandoned bike abatement. Um, as Cliff mentioned, that is a real problem on this campus, and, and a real limiting factor for us is, is storage space. So because state law says we have to, number one, hold bikes for three months before we can dispose of them, and then we can only dispose of them through those auctions, which I'll talk about in a minute, and that creates a problem. High security bike parking. Um, I sort of scour the, uh, the vendors out there to, to look at racks and decide what works best. And for the last number of years, we've, we've chosen this style of rack, which uh, everybody seems real happy with. It provides pretty good security. It looks nice and easy to install. And so we're you know, slowly retrofitting the whole campus with these things, replacing those concrete blocks and other inferior racks. Tire air stations, we currently have 10. Actually, one's out of commission right now over DMU, but um, because of the construction by our coffee house. But um, we've committed to installing at least one a year over the next few years until we get the whole campus sort of blanketed with where we need these. The next one's going to go somewhere out in the health sciences district. Um, so it's a free air all over campus. Um, our department looks for, for money. and. Um, so I, I write grant proposals, and others in our office do that as well to fund you know, major improvements like uh, this is an example of Hutchinson Drive. There's a $1.1 million project that we got largely funded through, through grant money um, to widen Hutchinson Drive from 113 out to uh, Road 98, the Primate Center, and adding bike lanes. That was done about three or four years ago. Bikeway Transit uh, Network Study, um, as you can see, we got a grant, or the university got a grant from Caltrans to do this uh, planning study. Uh, final report came out last spring, and was looking at both bicycle circulation on campus and transit, and it was a, it was a neat project in the way that people who were uh, running the project had some great public workshops to allow us, you know, people to really actually physically walk a huge aerial photo of the campus and take different colored post-its and you know, write what the problems were or what they liked about certain areas of campus and put them on this giant map that they then photograph the whole thing. It was a really, really fun way to, to find out what users of transit and bikes really uh, felt were important things to get done. And with the number that you see over 160 site improvements costing at least, uh, at least $27 million um, were identified. So don't expect those all uh, to be in place by the end of the year. Um, some more stats about that. Different projects. <clears throat> bike locker rentals. Um, we've got 76 bike lockers on campus. That means um, double that, what, 152 um, locker spaces um, around there, around campus in, in several different locations. If you're interested in those, you can ask them about them. Um, we, we store bicycles in the summer for, for primarily for freshmen who go home and, you know, have haven't moved into an apartment or off-campus location yet um, and don't want to go to the hassle of taking a bike back to LA or whatever, so we buy some bike storage for a modest fee. It's indoor storage. Of course, the bike auctions. Uh, everybody loves the bike auctions. Um, we have two public auctions a year, one that's fall and the spring. Next one is May 1st, um, at which we typically uh, have between 420 and 430 uh, bicycles up for sale to the highest bidders. Um, and we also now do eBay auctions where we take the worst of it. And these are basically the abandoned bikes, okay? So we take the worst of them and we put them on eBay in lots of 10 bikes each. 
um, pretty much just for parts. Um, but uh, again, we're obligated to, the only way to dispose of these bikes is through auctions. So that's that's just another way to get rid of a lot of them. And much to our surprise, people are willing to pay money, you know, not, you know, enough that makes it worth our while to uh, have these uh, eBay auctions as well a couple of times a year. Uh, valet bike parking is a service we provide at a variety of uh, events on campus and occasionally off. Um, and it's just a free way, you know, provide some secure bike parking, usually done in a place where there's really not sufficient bike parking to, to handle the demand at special events. That's it for the bikes. Well, th thank you, Mary and David. And, and first of all, let me thank uh, Professor Wheeler for uh, inviting us here. Uh, I took a look at the series over the lunchtime. Uh, quite an impressive uh, group of people that will be coming. Uh, we're honored to be here. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for inviting us. Really, your feedback only helps us improve uh, the program uh, to make it better, and that's what we're that's what we're trying to do. We want to continue to improve the programs and services that we offer the campus, and through the programs that we already talked about, that's a, that's the feedback that we're taking from travel surveys, from emails that you sent us, from phone calls, and we're just in the process always of continuing to, to try and improve. Okay, last question before. Uh, we uh, open this up to uh, further questions. How many bike licenses did TAP sell last year? Nine thousand. Less than nine. Three thousand. Eight thousand. More than three. Five. Eight thousand. Who said five? <laughs> All right. Five thousand four hundred thirteen licenses. What's your name? I mean, congratulations. Well, you can take him to lunch with you. <laughs> okay, we have a few minutes for some questions. So, here's your chance. Anything you want to know about transportation? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I was wondering, are there any plans for a bike share program? Seems to be like an emerging thing. We have several vendors approach us and we've met a little bit of bike Okay, uh, yes, about bike share programs. And those people have different definitions of bike share programs, but some of the classic ones these days are the ones like in Paris where, where they have these special bike racks that you use a smart card or cell phone or some, some easy way of, of sort of renting a bike instantly um, at pretty low cost um, to use. And you know, around Camp Trail Town. And um, it's a fairly heavy investment of infrastructure and, and bicycle you know, purchases. Um, and the vendors that have approached us, I mean, they all think, you know, well, yeah, Davis is a perfect place. Well, <laughs> when we start talking about how bicycles are really used here, um, then they sort of lose interest a little bit. Because it's not, you know, we're not a big tourist destination like Paris or, you know, some of these other big cities like Washington, D.C., Vancouver that have pretty successful programs. Um, so, as yet, we're not seeing it, um, and it is pretty expensive. We don't really have a budget at this point to try to implement one. And really, it's it's not the cost of a bicycle that in Davis that keeps people from riding a bike. Really, I mean, most of us you know could afford to go to a yard sale and buy a bike for twenty bucks if we needed a bike or come to the bike at the auction. Bike question? Yeah, bike question. Um, so I tend to take the train back to the area. Mm -hmm. uh, bike to the train station. Yeah. The problem is that there's not enough parking spots yeah. and it happened to my friends that they would lock their bike to the fence along the station. Oh, yeah. When they came back from Bay Area, the bike wasn't there anymore. Yeah. Um, did, did, I mean, do you ever just take the bike I, on the train? Because that's pretty convenient. Well, that's the problem. I, I get out of the train in Santa Clara and I live in Mountain View. Oh, so it's yeah. far away. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot bike and you cannot really take the bike on the light rail. Well, there's a lot of interest in, in trying to improve the bike parking at the Depot, of course, that's out of our jurisdiction, but um, I'm on the City Bicycle Advisory Commission, and it's something we've talked about. Um, it, it's probably well aware of, certainly, so, but I don't have a ready answer for it. Um, I've taken a train before also, and there's also a limited amount of spaces to put your bike on the well, train. That's true. Yeah. So the more people that take their bikes on the train, yeah. the more people are actually out of trouble. Or, or, uh, you know, consider a folding bike. Like <laughs> yeah, but then you not have to be able to do that. Anyway, the city's, the city's looking at it. Where are the problems? 
Exactly what you do when you go online. You reserve the car. Because for, for example, for the Thanksgiving weekend, there will be a lot of people who will need So I would <laughs> certainly sign up now. You know, it takes about candidate. three to five days to get approved. So if, if you think you're going to be needing a car, I would definitely get signed up now. And, and then you'll. So you definitely have to plan ahead if there's something for yeah. your holiday coming. Yeah, three to five days it takes. Yeah, to get yeah if it's something that everybody's going to be part of, yeah, you want to go. Three to five days is just to join the service initially, right? Right. 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 And you get it $8 an hour or no, it's eight, it's eight dollars an hour, sixty-two dollars a day, Monday through Friday. On the weekends, it's nine dollars an hour and seventy-seven. 70. 70. And you said it includes gas and insurance. Correct. Correct. So that's the total cost for you. Yeah. Do taxes apply on top of that? It's a hundred and eighty. Does it include a tax? Oh, do you? I believe it's inclusive, Mary. Is the tax inclusive? I think. Tax? That's a good question. That's. I We should find that out for you. But Zipcar.com. Or go, you know what I would do is go on the TAPS website or go on Go Club and click on Zipcar from there, and it'll get you into the UC Davis portal on Zipcar. So if you drive that car somewhere far, that actually you have to get gas again? They, they provide a credit card to your vehicle. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like when you rent the van from school. Yeah, it's, part, it's actually part of your responsibility to return the car to the same spot with no less than a quarter tank of gas. But the credit card will pay for the gas, so you don't have to pay the additional cost beyond you, beyond your hourly charge. You got a question? More question. You got a question here. Can you speak up, please? You can enroll for Go Club online, right? Correct. For Go Bike and Go Walk. Okay. The other ones, you just download the form, and then you have to bring it into the tap box. We're working on getting it all online. Thank you. Okay, one last question. Anybody? Anything else you want to know about transportation? Yeah, this, this is off the subject. I don't mean to uh, stray too far off, but as far as the, you're talking about bikes and um, certain reasons why people, you know, encounter problems and the bike theft problem, it seems to you know it stays fairly consistent every year. I wonder what the uh, tax approach is. Uh, what the what? The approach your group is. Well, of course, the bike theft, bike theft prevention, all is really a police matter. Mm -hmm. um, the license registration program helps a lot in recovering stolen bikes. Certainly, um, you know, the the police. Just um, sort of resurrected the bike enforcement program um, in, in April, and so um, so Ralph is the one of the full-time bike officer, and he's also you know, in addition to out there being enforcing enforcing traffic laws, 
he's starting to work a lot on the bike theft problem as well. So I'm not sure what's coming out of that right now, but, but we work fairly closely with him on those issues. Okay. I think that about does it. Let's have a hand for our speaker. Thank you. Thank you.